test of the new GoPro setup. Got the mic pointed at my face. Hopefully it's getting my voice better than it's getting the ambient sound of the truck. While I was in Peru, I had the truck exhaust it's sort of fixed. I wouldn't say it's completely fixed. It's still building up pressure in the cabin. They added a resonator upstream from the uh, the Roush can. I don't even want to call it a muffler. 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 And that would be a cop. We'll see how this goes. Maybe he doesn't like the GoPro soaking up all the view there. Maybe it's not a cop. Maybe it is. He's still there. Anywho. Turns out the exhaust was straight through basically the Roush can that's in there that's, that replaced the muffler is um uh, doesn't offer much muffling whatsoever. <coughs> One of Heidi's friends, Dennis, recommended going to the Ford dealership. Luckily, the Ford dealership was pat was booked up. Couldn't see me. He also recommended Beechers, so I went to Beechers, but Beechers didn't have the time. Recommended me to City Tire. City Tire took a look at it said he didn't know enough about aftermarket exhaust and, and recommended thrifty and the reason he did that was because I said I liked the sound I just wanted to tone it down a bit I didn't necessarily want the Ford muffler but I would have done it had they had time I would have put the, the stock muffler back on it but I'm actually glad that they were booked up this way I have nice sounding exhaust toned down a little bit by the resonator so the resonator from what I read shapes the exhaust gases kind of deflects them a little bit before they hit the can the Roush can and then the Roush can does some probably does some resonating as well but that's about it and Brian at, at Thrifty said that the, the resonator was basically a glass pack so fiberglass packed pipe I saw it it had some 45 degree bends of what looked like chicken wire inside to help kind of deflect and create turbulence in the gas so kind of cool he did it quickly he did it in about a half an hour and then I asked him also to remove the fifth wheel kit that's on that was on the truck the fifth wheel kit previous owner had took off the receiver, the hitch receiver, but left the rack because it was a pain in the ass to remove. But since Brian had it up on the lift and he had all the tools, I asked him to remove it. He did it. He gave me a good deal. I didn't, I, I paid 50 bucks for it. And then after taking it out and test driving it and feeling the difference when he removed the kit, I went back and paid him another 70 bucks he originally told me it would be an hour's worth of labor to do it 70 bucks he only charged me 50 so I took him a $20 tip because the, the removal of that thing makes the handling much better it was just I didn't realize what it was but I'm presuming that because the back end was so stiff because of that those crossbars there were two crossbars that were attached down to the frame of the body on either side of the wheel I'm sorry on the it was attached to the frame right at the wheels at the rear wheels and I, I believe that that stiffened the frame up probably added weight right onto the wheels there I don't know if that's sprung or unsprung weight uh, if it's on the frame I guess it's still sprung right 
was very happy to have that off. It made loading the truck easier because those crossbars were right at the wheels and prevented me from sliding anything into the, the bed. And it also meant that whatever boxes had to be in between it, those two crossbars, to be able to pack well. So having those removed was really good. definitely not the bridge that my mother used to bring us on so when I was a kid we used to drive into Kentucky to go see family and when we crossed over the Ohio River there were a lot of exchanges on the highway um, exits on ramps lane changes so she would always tell all of us kids that I have two sisters so there would be three kids in the car. She'd tell us all to get in our corners. She'd turn the radio down so that she could have total concentration on making sure she had the right lane. But Google Maps has taken me a different route. It's taken me down these bridges, which I don't know that I've ever been on these bridges. But there we go. Welcome to Kentucky. stretch. Just stopped at the, get, at the grocery store, picked up hot dogs and hamburgers and stuff to grill out for dinner. I'm on 127 south. It's about 17 degrees Celsius out, which is high 60s. Very comfortable. And uh, it's been a quick, quick drive. It's been about five and a half hours. I left around noon. I left a little bit earlier than that, but I had a stop to make. I am now in Danville, Kentucky. And looking forward to visiting family, even for a short bit. Not a lot of color in the trees here, less so than Indiana, but it's warmer. So the trees are going to turn color later. May at a, maybe at a lesser degree as well. But fall is here, without a doubt. Speed limit's 55, got the cruise control set on 64-ish. Fueled up some gas earlier, paid $349 for it. it. Looks like it's three and a quarter here. Much cheaper than up north in Indiana, that's for sure.